What is up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Guns, Nerds, and Steam. Today I present to you Alpha 20 in a nutshell. A quick overview of the anticipated changes we can expect from Alpha 20 and beyond. Let's get right into it. Number 1. Random World Generation The fun pimps appear to be implementing a world generation system similar to Nitrogen. Check out this video here to see just how that works. Hills, mountains, rivers, waterfalls, canyons, streets, and other terrain features will be artist created, not procedurally generated, and placed in the world with stamp tech leading to much more immersive environments. There are tons of new ambient objects that will be scattered around as well, like mailboxes, street lights, newspaper boxes, and fire hydrants, among others. There will be sliders for things such as cities, mountains, water, biomes, and more. Biomes will have a game stage modifier, in other words, a loot and zombie difficulty multiplier. This is said to be 1.5 times for desert with hot weather survival, two times for snow with cold weather survival, and three times for the wasteland with low grade radiation survival. Note, this will not be as bad as current radiation zones. The burned forest will be combined with the wasteland. Radiation can be mitigated with consumables like pills or with anti-radiation gear. Short trips or questing in the wasteland is survivable, but living there would require constant management of radiation poisoning. There will be a heads-up display indicator when stepping into a new biome with details about the multiplier. There will be new, variable map borders, with some water, radiation, and mountain borders mixed into each world. Worlds will be split into city types. For example, small town, city, old west town, small wasteland town, and wasteland city. Cities will be split into districts. For example, rural, rural town, industrial, commercial, residential, downtown, and city center. Only certain POIs will be allowed to spawn in particular cities and districts. For example, the Deshong Tower will only be allowed to appear in the city center of a city. This will keep the world themed and organized. FPS intensive POIs will be forced apart to help with performance for those of us running the game on potatoes. POI types in an area have been restricted, so no more clusters of passing gases right next to each other. There are up to 13 new POIs of various sizes, including up to 7 large ones as of the November dev stream. 100 plus are reported in the dev diary, but note, this includes decorative props and other environmental art, not necessarily quest location POIs. The goal is to keep map generation time to one minute per kilometer, so that's eight minutes for an 8K map. There will be 6K, 8K, and 10K options for random gen. Pre-gen maps are to be deleted and replaced with three brand new pre-gen maps using the new generator. Number two, vehicles. Vehicles will now be tintable with dye, just like weapons. New mods such as fuel saver, off-road headlights, supercharger, expanded seats, and a reserve fuel tank will be available. There will reportedly be an increased seating for the 4x4, the gyrocopter, and the motorcycle. No new vehicles are planned, but new models are in the works. Number three, shapes and building. Each shape in the game will be available for every block material. There will be no more frames. Blocks will be placed as particle board, which is a type of plywood, but it will act essentially the same as a frame. Upgrading has been simplified. Reinforced wood and reinforced concrete have been removed. Concrete is now to be just as strong as reinforced concrete. No more concrete drying phase. Blocks will no longer downgrade their material as they're attacked. They will disintegrate upon destruction. New half meter blocks have been created which will improve the design of smaller rooms and give them a more realistic feel. There is discussion of adding all specialty block shapes and many items currently only available in creative mode, for example, the coffee maker. There will also be a new door model with breakdown effects. Number 4. 
Feral Sense. There will be a new difficulty slider affecting zombie senses. This ranges from completely inert zombies that essentially will ignore you to horde night senses where all zombies in range will immediately move to your position. Think 28 days later. Basically, zombie hearing and seeing will be multipliable up to 2.5 times, which means detection distance. There will be four options to implement this. None, day, night, and my personal favorite, all. Number five, primitive weapons. Craftable on day one if you find the parts, these include the pipe rifle, pipe pistol, pipe baton, pipe shotgun, and you guessed it, the pipe machine gun. There is suggestion that this replaces the blunderbuss. Number six, big quest changes. There will be the addition of tier three buried supplies. A new quest type has been created, restore power where upon activation, all lights are turned off in the POI and you are tasked with going through to repair one or more generators to turn the lights back on. There are discussions to implement a bonus if done at night. Quests given in a particular biome will result in a quest destination in the same biome, but this is still in discussion. You can now cycle through the quest tiers. If you've unlocked higher tier quests, you can always go back to lower tier quests for easier and faster jobs. Number seven, zombies and entities. A new drone will be introduced, available to craft or buy from traders. Quote, the drone is just a pack mule and has no weaponry. He can heal you if you sacrifice a mod slot for the healing mod. He can boost your stamina recovery speed with the teddy bear mod, has armor and a headlight to light your way when mining, etc. Cargo mods are stackable, so I imagine most people filling her up with cargo mods. End quote. New models for the nurse, screamer, bat cop, burnt zombie, thug, and hazmat zombies are confirmed. All zombies are said to have new 4K textures before release. There will be new trader models and textures as well. The football player zombie will be removed because he had such a small, specific set of spawn locations in order to maintain immersion. The Hawaiian or the tourist zombie will become a gasser with special ability spit and gas cloud. There will be new animal textures including at least the chicken and the dog. New animals have been mentioned, but not yet revealed. Number eight, miscellaneous notes, not yet confirmed for Alpha 20, but possible. There will be locked desks and filing cabinets with upgraded loot. Toilets have been redone. There will be a retouch of old POIs up to the Alpha 19, Alpha 20 quality standard. Work continues on the loot progression system, and you can see my Lucky Looter video here for an explanation of how the loot system currently works. Loot bags will attach to the block below them to avoid floating. Small POIs will now be able to be found inside of larger POIs, for example, food carts, signs, and other decorations can now be dynamically seen inside larger areas. Number nine, features pushed to Alpha 21 and beyond. Wandering zombies inside POIs. Zombies crawling through one meter high holes, possibly the player as well. A character overhaul with a new armor and clothing system that has new perks and bonuses. The current 10 slot system will be replaced with a four slot system with thematic outfits and special perks and bonuses. Personally, I feel as though this could change before implementation as in my opinion, this change is controversial and the sentiment has been somewhat negative. There will be a new character model with no clipping, with a choice of, quote, head, no more ugly character customizations anymore, end quote. Bandits will be added, and this is said to be implemented in the last alpha before beta. There will be a water overhaul, improving appearance and performance. There will be a Steam Workshop integration. There will be a story mode implemented in either beta or gold. DLC will be released after gold. There will be zombie accessory or zombie appearance variation in the future. There will be, quote, one pocket mod to rule them all. 
end quote. There has been discussion of a new defend quest, and there has also been discussion of an infestation style zombie spawning system, but there is no clear indication of how this will work yet. Number 10, release date. Currently, there are no plans for an Alpha 19.6. The current version is 19.5 Experimental. Live streams indicated release in March, but that was in November. At that time, they had also said there would be new live stream updates every two weeks, but it's been over six months since the last one. According to Madmole on November 2nd, 2020, quote, we're looking at spring, which always leads to more like summer. We'll see though, we're making good progress, end quote. Multiple items originally expected to be in Alpha 20 have been pushed back to Alpha 21. According to Fatal, on April 15th, 2021, Alpha 20 is, quote, very playable. I played it briefly last week to test Feral Sense. All the normal stuff works fine. Just some features like block shape UI updates are in flux, end quote. Fatal goes on to say on May 14th, 2021, that, quote, Alpha 20 will be soon enough, we hope. Unity says they made a fix for one of the DirectX 12 or Vulkan issues I reported, but it takes weeks slash months to filter down through their testing and into a release. I do hope to update Unity once more before Alpha 20 is done, so it should have that fix." End quote. Despite 40 plus fun pimps working on 7 Days to Die, they appear to have encountered some issues that have delayed release. But Given the sneak previews, I can confidently say that Alpha 20 will exceed expectations. I'm expecting experimental release at some point this summer. As Mad Mole said, Alpha 20 will be released when it's done. Let me know in the comments what feature you're looking forward to the most and tell me what kind of playthrough you're planning to start once it's released. I'll be back again soon with my Alpha 20 release video, and I hope that you'll join me then. But until then, I have plenty more 7 Days to Die content on my channel with more in the works. Please consider leaving a like if you enjoyed this content, and subscribe for more of it. I wish you all the very best. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.